hopefully you can all see the presentation, uh, which, as you can see, the, the first thing you'll see when you arrive in Manchester, likely orders you arriving by plane into Manchester Airport. So this is a sign you'll see at Manchester Airport, welcoming you to Manchester. So I'll start with a, a little bit of information just about Manchester and its history. Um, so the first thing to know is that people in Manchester uh, are called Mancunians or Manx. So in the same way that people in Liverpool are called Scousers or people in London are called Cockneys, in Manchester we're Mancunians uh, or Manx, which is easier. Uh, Manchester has a very uh, sort of industrial history. So this is a very old picture of Manchester. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of chimneys. A lot, so there was a lot of factories in the city centre. Uh, and these houses that you can see at the front are where people, uh, the people who worked in the factories used to live. Um, so it wasn't far for them to go to work. Uh, and you see here there's chimneys um, and all the smoke coming out of the chimneys. It's important to, to mention the air is a lot cleaner now than it was then. Um, this here is a picture of Manchester city centre today. So as you can see, it's a lot more modern no houses in the city centre anymore um, and the buildings are a lot more modern so you can see well most of the buildings here they're all quite modern fresh buildings but dotted around there you can just about see the silt chimneys so this is one of the old buildings that are here it's still standing here um, again old buildings they're old warehouses old factories old mills that are now uh, office blocks schools um, gyms, cinemas, apartments. So they're all still in use. Uh, and it, it's, it's quite a nice blend in the city centre. You'll see there's old and new buildings. And when you're walking through the city centre, obviously, naturally, you just look in front of you. But when you're here in Manchester, if you look up, you'll notice that the buildings are very, very old. Um, even though at, on ground level, it's all, you know, Armani and Louis Vuitton shops. But if you look up, those shops are actually in very old old uh, buildings. Now this symbol, the B, is very important to Manchester. It's called the Manchester B, uh, and you'll see that everywhere in Manchester. It's um, it's sort of the, the adopted symbol of Manchester. And the reason being, bees are known to be very hardworking uh, creatures, just like Manx were back in the day and still are now. Um, so you'll see the, uh, the B symbol uh, everywhere you'll see it on buildings, you'll see it on people's clothing, you'll see people uh, see it on cars. People have got B tattoos. You'll see, obviously, at the moment, a lot of people are wearing face masks. You'll see the B on the face mask. So that's sort of the symbol of Manchester, uh, adopted by the Manx. Okay, sports. Sport in Manchester and in the UK, the, the biggest sport is obviously football. Um, and there's two major teams in Manchester. There's Manchester City uh, and there's Manchester United. Well, they're the two that you'll have heard of. Um, as this is a, a, a presentation about Manchester, I'm not going to tell you which team I support um, because I don't think it would be right for me to be uh, preferential towards one team. So I'm not going to tell you who I support. But there are loads of other teams in Manchester. Um, smaller teams, so there's teams like Stockport County, Rochdale, uh, Bolton Wanderers, Oldham, Wigan, uh, Salford. So they're all smaller teams, but if you wanted to go and watch Manchester City or Manchester United, you can. But if you wanted to go and watch some lower league football, um, there's plenty of other teams to go and watch. But say for me, there's only one team in Manchester, but I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you which team that is. Okay, there's loads of other sports though. Uh, so again, any sport you're interested in, you can go and watch or you can go and play. And there's, there's facilities for both. So there's a big team in Manchester uh, for basketball, the Manchester Giants. Uh, and Abbey College has a, a partnership with Manchester Giants as well. Uh, we'll be launching our, our basketball, uh, academic studies with basketball course, and that's in partnership with uh, the Manchester Giants. Um, there's tennis, so if you like playing tennis, there's loads of places. I play tennis, so if you wanted to go and play, I can tell you where to go. Uh, this is the regional tennis centre, so this is uh, right next to Manchester City Stadium. 
Um, there's loads of tennis courts, so you can go just to play with your friends, or you can go and do coaching, or they have social events. Cycling now, uh, Team GB, which is uh, the the Great Britain Athletics and Olympics team, uh, they win a lot of medals in in the Olympics. They're very very successful cycling team, uh, and they actually train in Manchester, so their base is at the Velodrome. Uh, which again is next to Manchester City Stadium. Um, again, you can go and watch, you can go and take part. Golf, if you like golf, uh, again, with it's um, there's golf courses all over the place. Uh, again, I play a little bit of golf. Um, so if you wanted some advice on where to go and how to get there and stuff, I can, I can help you with that. And every golf course uh, has a coach so you can go and have some lessons so even if it, these are sports you might not have ever tried and you think i'll just give it a go there's there's plenty for you to be doing here uh cricket um not my favorite sport but i know it's very popular um and old trafford uh in manchester has the uh lancashire lightning uh, lancashire lightning and uh, lancashire uh, cricket teams and obviously england play a lot of their games at old trafford as well we have a netball team, so Manchester Thunder. Uh, again, if, for the for the girls, if you're interested in playing netball, there's a team. Um, we have a big skiing slope called Chill Factor, which is um, you can go and do skiing, snowboarding, um, sledging, and again, I've I've done sort of I can't ski, but I tried, um, and I went for the day. It was about twenty pounds for a, a two-hour lesson. Um, and you get to go, go snowboarding, which on a day like today, because it's boiling in Manchester today, it, I'd love to be skiing at the moment. Uh, and rugby as well, there's rugby league, rugby union, so there's loads of teams you can play for, um, or there's teams you can uh, just go and watch. Um, Sail Sharks, I think, are one of the, the more successful rugby teams, and they're based um, in, in Stockport. So sport... There's loads to do. There's loads of others. You know, there's volleyball. There's the sort of martial arts. If you're interested in that, we had a student a couple of years ago who took up boxing while he was here and went boxing training. So there's loads to do. Uh, and if you ever need any help or advice on where to go and how to get involved, just just come and see me or someone else in student services. Now, music and entertainment. Now, Manchester's very famous for its music. Um, particularly sort of during the 90s. Uh, they produced a lot of bands who you might not have heard of the band, but you probably will have heard the music, uh, especially around Europe. Oasis are the biggest band in Manchester, probably the most famous. Um, if you ever see me around with headphones on, I'm probably listening to Oasis. Um, but there's also a big famous band called the Stone Roses. Um, and the lead singer here, Ian Brown, I'll mention, I'll come back to him later, but he's a very famous Mancunian. Uh, and then there's a, a band called Take That, who are, again, very famous in the 90s and quite still quite famous now with Robbie Williams and Gary Barlow. Uh, they're from Manchester. Um, but there's also other types of music. So there's the, uh, the Halle Orchestra and the Halle Choir, um, who are based at the Bridgewater Hall. Uh, so if you're interested in classical music uh, or opera stuff, the Bridgewater Hall is a great place to go. And they've just started doing, which I've not been to myself yet, but I'm going to, is they'll show old films. So say uh, like Jurassic Park and they'll show Jurassic Park on a, on a cinema screen, but they've taken all the music out of the film and then where the music would be in the film, the band play it live. So it's like a really good uh interesting different way of watching watching the films um there's venues to go and watch music and other entertainment so this is manchester arena uh so this is sort of where all the the big uh big name artists or so people like ed sheeran and beyonce and whoever else you like um taylor swift they'll all go to manchester arena that has twenty one thousand seats uh, and there's other venues so like Manchester Academy, which is here, which just has a few hundred people. Um, so it's obviously, I don't think Ed Sheeran would perform in front of 300 people. But if you, you know, if there were smaller bands or artists that you like who happen to be there, um, you know, it's there. And both of those arenas are, both, are based in, in the centre of Manchester. 
Uh, and there's also uh, comedians. Uh, so you can go and see people like Ricky Gervais. Uh, you can see magic acts like Darren Brown or um, Dynamo, people like that. Uh, and they're usually at the in between. So at Manchester, at Manchester Arena is huge. Manchester Academy is small. And Manchester Apollo is in between. And that's where you'll see usually see comedians. Again, come and ask us if you need any help arranging tickets or booking tickets or anything like that. Art and culture. Now, I'll be honest, art isn't my uh, strong point, my forte, but I do know that um, L.S. Lowry is sort of the most famous artist to come out of Manchester. Strictly speaking, he's from Salford. Um, but again, his all his art is inspired by uh, Manchester. And again, you can see here the chimneys, the factories, all the people. Um, and all his work is in this style. So I think there was a song, I believe, in the 70s called Matchstick Men and Matchstick Dogs and Cats, which uh, was number one in the charts in the UK. And it was it was written about Lowry and about all his work. Uh, and we also have the Lowry Centre, uh, which again, is they do plays and music and comedy and stuff like that. And that's, uh, it's obviously the Lowry Centre is, is named after L.S. Lowry. Uh, and also you'll see around Manchester, there's a lot of graffiti and street art, legal street art. Uh, and again, you see here, this is based in, in the northern quarter in Manchester. So it's the B. Again, you'll see, you're seeing the Bs there, which is, like I mentioned before, a very important part of Manchester. Um, but there's loads. I mean, this is a, a painting or graffiti art of a, a lady called Steph Horton, who's the England ladies captain and plays for Manchester City. Um, and there's a, that's, I mean, you can't really tell on that picture, but that, that's the size of a building. So somebody's been up some ladders to, to paint that. Um, but otherwise we've got Manchester Universities, uh, that, sorry, Manchester Museum, which is based at Manchester University. Um, we have Manchester Art Galleries. We have the Whitworth Art Gallery. This picture here, which I've just brought up to the Museum of Science and Industry. Uh, so obviously it's sort of more sort of futuristic, um, science-based um museum uh there's the national football museum which is very nice very big uh, and it's got everything to do with football like you can see there all the old football shirts there's um you can go and see the trophies and the um sort of about video so like fifa you know uh, football video games there's sort of a, an exhibition about football gaming at the moment so it's a it's a really cool place and i think i think it's free to go in or you just have to pay a donation, but well, I think it's free. Uh, and then there's the Imperial War Museum, which as the name suggests, is all about sort of the wars and, and stuff, which I think there's a few of them all around the UK, but there's one based in Manchester. Okay, education-wise. So there's, there's three major universities in Manchester. Um, there's the University of Manchester, which is uh, a Russell Group, a Russell Group University. Um, and they're sort of they're quite strong across the board. You know, any any subject area, virtually any subject area, they they uh, have courses in that. Um, it's a very popular destination for our students, um, and they also accept our IFP courses. Um, there's the Manchester Metropolitan University. Uh, so again, city centre based and they're specialising, again, strong across the board, but they specialise particularly in business courses um, and the art, fashion and design courses. Uh, and the Salford University, uh, which is a little bit further out of the city centre, but only a 20 minute walk. Um, and they specialise in medical courses, uh, so they do nursing and midwifery. Uh, but they're also strong in business and media. Um, so uh, one of my old jobs, I worked with Salford University and some of the students I worked with there, they're on TV in the UK as TV presenters and uh, radio hosts and stuff. So they're a very, very good university for media. Shopping. Now, I know a lot of you like shopping. Um, and there's plenty of places to go shopping in Manchester. Manchester Arndale which you have to remember that name, that is literally just around the corner from the college. And that has all sort of your high street shops. So it has like the Apple shop and it has Top Shop, River Island, Adidas, 
um, all the all the main brands. Um, and the Trafford Centre is the same. So it has the same kind of shops, but it's an indoor uh, centre about half an hour out of the, the centre of Manchester um, in Trafford, which is why it's called the Trafford Centre. Um, and again, say they uh, they have everything that the Arndale has plus more. They've got cinema, they've got bowling alleys, they've got restaurants and cafes and Sea Life Centre, Primark, obviously. Um, we have a Selfridges, you'll be pleased to know. Um, these yellow Selfridges bags, I always see them around the college. I know you guys love shopping at Selfridges. Uh, so that again, it's just a few minutes walk from the college. Uh, and there's an area called Spinning Fields. Again, five minute walk from the college and that has your high end designer stuff like Armani and Louis Vuitton and all the stuff I can't afford. Uh, so I don't go there. Um, but there's loads, loads of shopping opportunities in Manchester. Now, the weather. Manchester isn't a place of extreme weather, apart from today. Like I said, it is boiling today. But some days it's really hot. And some days it's really cold. And some days it's really rainy. And some days it can be all three of those in one day. The truth is, it's fine. The weather is is British weather. You know, it does rain, it does, we do have sun, we do have snow, we do have wind. If you prepare for all weather conditions, prepare, you know, come with shorts and t-shirt and hat and gloves and an umbrella, you'll be fine. Usually it's just dry and cloudy, but it, it, can, uh, it can change like that. So if you go out in shorts and t-shirt in the morning, you might need to buy a coat while you're out because it'll probably start snowing in the afternoon. Well, that's Manchester. That's the UK. Uh, transport. So to get around, um, if you're living in the boarding house at Riverside House, you don't really need any public transport because it's 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 quite close to the centre, very close to the centre of Manchester. If you're with a host family, or you're living with a guardian, or independently, uh, and you live a bit further out, or if you just want to travel around Manchester to get to these places to get to football or to sport or to um Stratford Centre, that kind of thing. You can get the bus. Now there's a this is a picture just next to Piccadilly bus station. There's buses that go every what every minute somewhere. Um, so there's there's a, a really good reliable uh, bus network. There's three train stations. So this is a picture of Manchester Piccadilly, uh, which is sort of the main uh, transport hub uh, in Manchester. Now you wouldn't really need the train to get around Manchester but this is handy to, to go to if you wanted to go and visit some other areas around Manchester, some other cities. Um, again really really good service, really really reliable so if you wanted to go to London for the day or for the weekend um, or you know, some one of the other cities in the UK that's where you'll be going from. Uh, we have a tram network, um, again very reliable, gets you uh, all around Manchester um, and that runs from about four o'clock in the morning till about one o'clock in the morning. Not that you'll need it at one o'clock in the morning, but it's uh, it's it's there and it's, and it's very reliable. That's how I get to work usually. Uh, the best way to see Manchester though, and to get around is walking. Uh, like I said, if you're walking around Manchester, um, just look up and see here. You see here, like I was mentioned before, if you look up at the buildings, they're all really old grand buildings um, and the thing to remember really and to appreciate is these buildings are hundreds of years old so they weren't made by machines these were handmade somebody climbed a ladder up there and then chiseled it with his hands and with tools you know so they're really they're really quite impressive if you if you think about it um, and the other good way of getting around is cycling um, so if you buy a bike um, obviously lock it up securely um, but it's another good way of getting around in Manchester and the whole of the UK really, but man, I know that Manchester are investing a lot of money at the moment in cycle lanes to make it really safe for cyclists to, to get around. Um, like I said, I usually get the tram to work, but I have bought a bike, so I'll probably be cycling in from now on to try and keep fit. Um, so yeah, if you feel free to cycle in or race you or something. 
Okay, so there's lots, lots of other cities and towns uh, and things to do around Manchester, not just in the centre of Manchester. So the nearest major city to Manchester uh, is Liverpool, um, which is obviously famous for the Beatles, who were a big band in the 60s and still are now, really. Um, and they've got the Albert Docks, which are pictured here. It's a really nice city, actually. It didn't used to be, but it is now. Um, it's definitely worth a visit. It takes about an hour to get there on the train. Um, I go a couple of times a year for a day out because it's, it's a nice place. Uh, there's Chester, which is a very old uh, sort of historic city. Again, you can see, you can tell by the buildings how old it is. It's, I believe, uh, sort of 1700 Ed Edwardian style buildings. I might be wrong there. Um, but it's, again, it's a nice place. Uh, it's a lot smaller than Manchester, but it's, it's definitely worth a visit. And they also have a zoo, which is brilliant. I love Chester Zoo. Um, and it's not a small zoo either. It's got, every, name an animal, they've got it, probably. Uh, you know, lions, tigers, chimps, monkeys, everything. Crocodiles, we've got the lot. It's a really good day out. Uh, again, Chester and Chester Zoo are about an hour from Manchester. It's just next to Liverpool. Uh, if you like nature in the outdoors, there's the Lake District, which is a little bit further. It'll probably take you two hours on the train. Um, but the Lake District is very famous uh, for sort of doing uh, outdoor walks and activities. And you can see here the lake here. You can hire a canoe or a kayak and you can go kayaking, canoeing. Um, you just walk up the hills. It's a nice day out um, and a nice weekend away as well. If you want to make a weekend of it or during half term, you could go for a few days. Um, York, again, I think. I needed to check this and I forgot, but I believe York used to be the capital of the UK before London. Um, so again, it's a very historic city and this is York Cathedral, which is um, which is very famous and a very grand building. Uh, and then other things to do, there's a, a theme park called Alton Sowers, which again, about an hour and a half uh, to get there. That's a really good day out. Again, I go every year, I go to Alton Sowers for the day and it's uh, it's a good day out. So again, if you need help traveling to any of these, you need help with, with um, you know, booking trains or booking tickets for the zoo or Alton Towers or whatever, or you just need a bit of advice. I've got, uh, again, at, my, at one of my old jobs, I used to organize days out for students. So I've got itineraries somewhere um, on my emails, so or I could just print an itinerary for you and give you, a, you know, a list of things to do for the day. Uh, so the area around the college. So this is um, a map of the city centre uh, and here is Abbey College. So as you can see the college is in the centre of the centre. It is right in the in the centre of Manchester. So there's loads around the college. And you can see here these little knife and forks here. These are uh, all restaurants and takeaways. Now there's more than that. These are sort of the most famous ones which is why it's coming up on Google but there's loads. Just on this corner here is Prep, which is a coffee shop, which our students single-handedly keep Preps open, I believe, because they're just always in there. Uh, this here uh, is the Arndale, which I mentioned before. So again, these are all the shops and you can see there it is literally just around the corner. That is a two minute walk, one minute for me, because I've got long legs, but and say so once you get into the Arndale, you know, there's Tesco's, there's Boots, there's Zara, there's JD Sports, there's phone shops, um, banks are just around here. So there's Barclays Bank, there's HSBC Bank here. So we say we're we're in the centre of everything. And this place here, Moose Coffee. If you want to go for a nice breakfast on a weekend morning, that's the place to go. Trust me, you'll probably find me there. Uh, and this is a map of Riverside House, which is here. This is the boarding house. This is Riverside House, and this is Abbey College down here, and this is a map of how to get there. As you can see, it's just a straight line. If you don't turn any corners, you can't get lost. Except this, turn this corner here, but apart from that, don't turn any corners. It's about a 20 minute walk, um, but as we know, Google's not always correct with the walks. It takes me less than 15 minutes. Again, I walk quite fast. If you're walking in a group, it might take you a little bit longer, but it's, it's one mile. 20, so yeah, roughly 15, 20 minutes. But you don't really need to worry about that because we do have a bus that brings you into college and takes you home every day. 
so you don't need to walk it anyway but if you're going to walk in you know after college or you want to go and walk in at weekend to do some shopping or go to moose coffee uh, or whatever that's uh, that's the route you take it's dead easy or it's about three minutes in the taxi and there are buses that go straight down that road as well uh, now i mentioned earlier uh, a band called the stone roses um and ian brown being the the main uh singer the lead singer of that band and he made he said something a few years ago which has become quite a famous quote he said manchester has got everything except a beach and i firmly believe that yeah it has it's got everything um you know anything you want to do you, you can't but be bored in manchester there's so much to do if you like sport if you like music if you like history if you like art if you like computer games if you like anything you know working out going to the gym there's gyms all over the city center it has got everything except a beach now we did try and build a beach once in spinning fields somebody turned up with loads of sand and threw it on the floor and it didn't work but we tried but the beach is about an hour away um on the train to, to liverpool or blackpool so if you want to go to the beach you can it's not far but everything else it's in manchester it is genuinely the greatest city in the world so uh, i think that's everything from me um uh, if we have any questions um sure tori will take over yeah. oh, hi mark thank you um thank you very much for that that was really informative and um really um really really interesting to learn um so much about manchester um one question that i have is about in terms of for the borders do the college organize different trips out for them to participate in yes uh yeah so places like i mentioned so places to uh to like alton towers chester zoo liverpool we will arrange trips um for them sort of throughout the year so it might be um for the first sort of uh first month we'll do like a long a long trip so maybe we'll go to Liverpool for the day but then we'll organize things in Manchester as well um but we're quite we're quite sort of reactive in the boarding house so instead of instead of setting things up that we think people will want to do and hope they want to do it we ask for feedback so we'll say to the students what do you want to do um and if somebody says I want to go to Chester Zoo or we have a few people who want to go to Chester Zoo then we'll arrange that for them because we, we spent in pre previous years we spent a bit of time sort of arranging activities that nobody joined in with so we we were sort of more keen to to um to find out what people actually want to do and then we'll arrange it for them. okay that's great thank you very much now one other question i've had in obviously you've talked a lot about sport i mean that you know sport is very important and quite key to the manchester area um what about um athletics is there any athletics in manchester yeah so i mentioned that the um at Man next to manchester city stadium is the tennis center and the cycling center the whole area around manchester city stadium is called sports city um and there's 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 loads of stuff and there is a, an athletics uh track um i can't remember the name of the team um but there is a yeah there's an athletics track right next to manchester city stadium um, so yeah, you can yeah. You can so, if do all that. Was, so if a student was interested in athletics, you'd be able to help them um, be able to sort of yeah. like join a club or, or help organise some training or something like that. Yeah, definitely. We've done it before. So not with athletics, but any sport. Yeah, we've we've helped set people up with various sports. So yeah, we can definitely help with athletics. Okay, and. So what generally do you think is the most, one of the most sort of popular things, what do the students seem to like most about being in Manchester? Um, I think, like I said, at the end there, I think it's just the variety. There's, there's just, um, there's so much to do. Um, we've got a, a great, I mean, I've not really talked about food much, uh, mainly because most students are going to be living in our, our boarding house of all the foods provided anyway, but there's a lot of restaurants in Manchester, uh, everything from sort of, mcdonald's burger king kfc all the big brands and nando's and stuff but then there's loads of um i eat out a lot and there's there's loads of restaurants um sort of independently owned that are really good high quality food um 
affordable as well. Um, so I think I think the students like to sort of just go out and explore. There's there's um, one of the shopping places I didn't mention was uh, a place called Laflex Palace, which is in one of the old warehouses, and it's just I can't really describe it. It's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit weird, but it's really cool. Like there's loads of little stalls in this building and there's there's loads of, of stuff to do there so yeah it's i think it's just the people the thing people like most is the variety of stuff to do it's, it's like i said you can't be bored okay and um, what about um sort of diff the different extracurricular activities i mean what generally did um is offered and and when did the students do them um well the activities we 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 offer activities at riverside house in the boarding house um in the evenings and at weekends um so there'll be sort of competitions and games within the flats um we have uh sports uh, so uh when the enrichment starts again there'll be sport um and multi-sport at the manchester giants um training complex um but like i say again we 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 offer um loads of things like film clubs and and uh, music stuff like that is is usually available um but we again we're sort of going to be quite reactive to to what the demand is um this year really okay is there a gym at riverside house there's not one at riverside house um but there's one um you can use the the gym at salford university which is about a five minute walk from riverside house um and there's gyms in the city center so you can um the most popular one is Pure Gym because it's open 24 hours a day. Um, and that's that's on Market Street, which is right next to the Arndale. But there's, there's again, I can I can help people out if they wanted to join the gym. Um, but there's, yeah, there's loads of gyms in the city centre, but there's not one at Riverside, unfortunately. Okay. And then one other question that I've had in is about the diversity of, of, of Manchester and sort of how diverse it is, is the general population in Manchester City? Uh, very um there's there's sort of uh every sort of religion and race culture everyone's you know you walk around manchester for an hour and you'll you'll see everyone <laughs> um and it's everyone's sort of uh welcome and well treated and, and um catered for you know in terms of, of places of worship there's everything's there um you know there's no there's no racism or anything in, in Manchester it you know it's it's a very it's very diverse to answer the question it's very diverse okay that's great thank you I think that covers all the questions that we've um that we've been we've been asked um obviously if any of you do have any other questions you can always um email in to um to the college and we'd be very happy to answer any questions you have on a one-to-one -one basis and I said we have recorded this session, so we will make a copy of the recording available to you all as well. So I think that just remains to say, um, Mark, thank you very much for your very in informative presentation. And we will um, say, um, say goodbye to everyone that's here today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.